Hey my love, it's Magda Kay here, your intimacy coach and a Tantra teacher and welcome to my channel! If this is your first time here and you simply got very curious about today's video then welcome, it is awesome to meet you and if you are returning then I am so happy that you are back! Now before we get into today's video I just want to remind you that my brand new book No More Faking It is live and available to order. Make sure to check the link below in the description of this video if you want to get your copy. We have of course Kindle and ebook, we have paperback, hardcover and audiobook version as well. The book is for women who are looking for a new way of approaching relationships. You will learn about my signature method working with your four power centers which in my opinion is the most effective system for a woman to get everything she desires in her relationship, in the bedroom and in life. We have gotten already so many beautiful reviews and feedback from women loving the book, calling it thought-provoking and as one woman said, the most refreshing book I have read in many years. So I'm super excited about the book, so happy it's available and if you feel cold, if you're curious, again make sure to check below in the description for the link to get your copy. Okay, and now let's get into today's video. We are going to explore the stagnant relationship. So you get into the relationship, you're super excited and we usually want this relationship to keep evolving, we want to go deeper, but sometimes that doesn't happen. It started good but then it may feel like you're hitting the wall and this is where you're not really sure what to do with the relationship anymore. Can you save it? Is it time to call it quits? Or is this how relationships normally turn? So I want to share with you eight signs that you are in a stagnant relationship. Eight things that will tell you that your relationship stopped moving. And at the end of this video I will also share with you a few tips to revive a stagnant relationship because my love I do not want to leave you without any tips to change your situation if your relationship is stagnant indeed. So let's get to it. Number one, you no longer have fun. So you don't really spend time together as friends anymore. You are not enjoying each other's company as much as you used to. You don't really do activities anymore. Yeah, all the fun and excitement that you used to have is gone. This may mean that you don't want to be hanging out together, that you would rather go with your friends to do something or that your partner simply started annoying you which is literally the opposite of fun. But that's number one not having fun in the relationship. Number two, less sex or maybe even no sex at all. So if you no longer feel desire for your partner, if sex kind of becomes a chore that you are not looking forward to or maybe you're even trying to engage in different strategies to avoid having sex. So basically if you're having sex less than once a week or even less than that, this is a big sign that the relationship is stagnant. That also is linked to the fact that your sex life maybe simply became boring and dull, you don't try new things anymore, you just kind of, you know, you, you fell into a routine and you always do the same. For example, you always have sex in the morning before work and you always have your three standard positions. So there's no more sexual exploration and desire to try new things. So that is also a sign that the relationship got to the point when it's stagnant and not growing. Number three, you no longer try to reconcile with your partner. That means that when you have a conflict, when you have an issue, instead of actually trying to find a solution that will make both of you feel good and you can reconnect as a couple, you're just like, let it go, you don't care. And for some time you maybe don't talk to each other, you give silent treatment or you're angry with each other, but you're just kind of letting time to heal the situation because you don't want to engage, you don't want to have conversations, you don't want to put any effort and then after a few days you're just kind of coming back together as if nothing happened. 
So there's no desire to actually understand what your partner truly needs, what it is that they truly get upset about. There's also no desire in you to explain these things to your partner because there's this kind of feeling of like, what's the point? So that is a huge sign that your relationship got stagnant. Number four, you don't confide in each other anymore. That means that you simply don't feel safe and comfortable opening up and being intimate and vulnerable with your partner. It's either because you just don't want them to see these parts of yourself, it's because you either don't trust them, because they broke this trust with you, maybe you don't feel safe, and also maybe you simply don't want to. Like if you find yourself wanting to share deep personal moments from your life with someone outside of your relationship, rather than with your partner, huge red flag that something is not working in the relationship. Number five, you are no longer each other's priority and it shows in your daily life. You need your partner to do something for you and they're busy, they have other things that are more important. You need something from your partner but they have a night out with their friends or their colleagues. So other things start becoming more of a priority than you. So you feel it, you cannot rely on your partner the way you used to. And that also means that you start relying on other people outside of your relationship. If you need help, instead of going to your partner, you go to someone else. Number six, you find yourself actually questioning the relationship. So if you spend quite a lot of time wondering, is this the right relationship? Should we stay together or should we break up? This tells you that something is really off in your relationship. Number seven, you don't miss each other anymore. So let's say you travel for a week or maybe even longer with your friends or colleagues, even on your own, and you don't mind the fact that you're away from your partner. You don't have a desire to text them and tell them what you're doing when you're away. And you're also not necessarily needing them to check in with you. If you can go for like a week or two weeks being physically separated and not checking in at all, that is a huge sign that you hit the wall. And finally, number eight you're unhappy. Now look, in all relationships there will be moments when you'll feel unhappy, but if that's your constant in the relationship, then you know for sure that the relationship is stagnant. It's kind of dead. So what can you do to revive your relationship? If you found these eight points to be true for your relationship, what can you do? Can you do anything to bring life back into your relationship? Yes, you can. Now look, yes, it will require some work and I'll speak about this, but just because a relationship hit the wall doesn't mean that this is necessarily over. The main problem is that we approach relationships as something that should just be good on its own. Like with anything else in our life, we understand that if we want it to stay amazing and beautiful, we gotta put in some work. Like for example, if you want to have a good body and you want this body to stay good and healthy, you know you have to be moving the body, eating the right things, getting enough rest. So there's an element of you showing up consistently. When it comes to relationships, we have this weird notion that we don't have to do anything and as long as we started really good, it's like we were very happy, then it's just going to continue like that. And it doesn't. If you don't do anything, every relationship eventually becomes stagnant and dies. So here are three things to do if you want to make sure that either your relationship doesn't get stagnant in the first place or how to revive it if it already got to that point. The first point is you have to prioritize it. What does it mean to prioritize something? Is to be willing to invest in it. And we invest three things, money, time, and energy. If you look at the most successful people business-wise in our world, they all invest. For someone to have a lot of money, they invest. This is literally how people make huge amounts of money. So what is investment? I put something in so I can get the return even higher than what I put in. That's literally the definition of investment. If you are not investing, you're gonna have zero returns. This is something we need to cultivate as a new approach towards relationships. 
If you want a great relationship, you have to invest in it. The more you invest, the more you will get from your relationship. In most cases, people have never really invested anything in a relationship. People are not willing to hire a coach or to go through workshops together. They are not willing to invest money into the relationship. They're not even willing to invest time because they have other things in their life where they are willing to invest. So the quality of different areas of your life directly represents how much you're willing to invest of your money, time, and energy. There is no other way around it. If you want a great relationship, you have to start investing in it. All three things. You have to be investing money, whether that's again hiring a coach, a therapist, joining classes, doing some, you know, reading some books, even investing in getting some new sexy outfits or lingerie or traveling together with your partner. You gotta invest time. You have to be spending some time one on one alone to keep the romance alive. If you are always too busy, the relationship will not last. And finally, invest energy because guess what? It will take a lot of energy to keep this relationship. Again, you want a good relationship? Start investing in it. The second very important thing is to focus on the quality on your sex life. In other words, bring back that spark. Sex is the foundation of a romantic relationship. If you take away sex, what you have is friendship. The thing that makes romantic relationships different from other relationships is sex. And specifically, what is important is that sex opens flow of intimate energy between the partners. When you are having a lot of sex and good sex, then it opens you up and mostly it opens your heart, it opens your emotions so you can come closer together in this intimate, deep connection. Without sex, you don't have access to the same depth with your partner. Now, in many cases, what happens is that when things are not working in the relationship, we just don't desire our partner sexually. We don't want to be with them. Well, you know this thing when it comes to body language that if you feel happy, you smile, but you can also make yourself happy by smiling. Literally, if I position my body in a certain way, I am fooling my body to believe that it feels something. I can make myself feel happy by smiling. Honestly, just try it now, smile. And notice that the sensation in your whole body changes. I can stand like a superman and suddenly feel more confident. It's the same here. If you are not really feeling like having sex with your partner because you guys have some issues, start having sex and this will actually start solving a lot of issues in your relationship. But your sex life must be good. Now, it's not to say this is the only thing you're focusing on, but you must make sure that your sex life is good if you want the relationship to be good as well. And the third most important thing to focus on is communication. At the beginning, when we're in the honeymoon period, you don't have to say anything because, oh my God, everything is perfect, right? But then things are not perfect. And here is where communication comes in. Couples who know how to communicate are able to move through difficulties. Couples who don't know how to communicate start going deeper and deeper into bitterness and resentment and holding a grudge. So we have to communicate because what communication allows us to do is to kind of release the extra pressure of the negative things that in inevitably will be happening in your relationship. Like something is going to be happening that we love and it's amazing and fun and then something will happen that makes us really annoyed with our partner. In order for that not to stay energetically in your relationship, to let it go, you have to be able to communicate about this. Now. It's not like we are taught how to communicate. I don't know about you, but in the whole years of my official education, I didn't get the tools on how to express what I need and how to tell my partner that I'm upset about something. Instead, we end up arguing, fighting, and creating more conflict. So we have to learn the techniques to communicate in a firm yet loving way so we can make sure that the relationship can last for a long time. Meaning, 
I want to feel good and happy in the relationship. I want my partner to feel good and happy in the relationship because this is the only way for this relationship to feel good and be happy for both of us. So again, we have to learn how to communicate. These are the three most important areas if you want to have good relationships. So it means, remember, prioritize it, gotta invest in the relationship, focus on the quality of your sex life. You must have great sex. And three, learn to communicate. And inside the School of Intimacy, you will find a lot of tips, techniques, courses that teach you these things. We have a specific course called Communication Tools that gives you the tools so you can express openly to your partner what it is that you need, when your boundary got crossed, when you need things to change because you're not feeling satisfied. There is this technique called mirroring technique and desires, fears, and boundaries, which are my favorite techniques that I always teach my private clients and I use personally in my life as well. Then there is another training I really think you should check out and it's called Spice Up Your Sex Life. And you're gonna get all the tools and super awesome ideas on how to keep your sex life exciting. So these two courses specifically will help you revive your stagnant relationship. And coming back to the point number one about prioritizing your relationship, well, like I said, you have to invest in it. The School of Intimacy is available for everyone. It's only $69 a month. So you can easily access it with minimum investment to learn all the things you need to set your relationship for success. And then yes, you do need to actually go through the courses, watch them. If you can, watch them with your partner. But the more you invest in this relationship, the more trainings you watch, the more you practice the techniques that you will learn, the more returns you will get. That means the better the relationship will become. So if you would like to try the School of Intimacy, we are actually running a free trial so you can check it out for free, risk-free for seven days. Check the link below this video if you want to access it now. My love, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, please give it a like, please comment below, let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you feel like your relationship is stagnant and which of these points were true for you. And I would also love to connect with you over at Instagram. It's Magda K official. I post every day and you're getting more insights into my personal life as well. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye.